Hello, hello my friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space and another Stamp Timber exclusive video. As of me filming this intro, I have this video. There's two sets that are being released at the same time from two different brands that are collabing. I don't know, as of filming this, whether I will have that second video up or not. We'll see, we'll see, but I'll have all the links and the info like I do. Um, for those, again, for those not aware, the Stamp Timber um, exclusive limited edition collaborations are from many different brands that are collaborating with Simon Says Stamp. The sets are only available through Simon Says Stamp while supplies last, only during this month. Some sell out very quickly, some last a little bit longer, just depends. And even if and when they are no longer available. I have been linking to the collab brand um, with all my supplies and everything because they've got, every single brand has tons, tons of stamps and dyes and products and wonderful things to choose from. And some, they even have, you know, similar ones that go with, or, you know, you can get in substitution of, etc. It's all for fun and inspiration and excitement. And personally, I do love it, even though those that are aware, you know, my package arrived two weeks late. I'm scrambling, scrambling, but I love it. I just, I love just grabbing that set and I'm like, what am I going to do? You know, let's make something and just having fun with it. So we'll see. We'll see how many videos I get up and all the things, but I do post to my Facebook page, which is linked directly below the video in the description box. I have all my social media, but my Facebook page, my Instagram. And then I've this year I've started posting on my community tab. So if you go to my YouTube channel, there's the community under the banner. If you're on mobile, it'll be at the very top. But if you're on a desktop, it's my banner. And then it has tabs and there's videos, lives, playlists and community. And if you click on the community tab, I've been doing posts with each collab, the minute it goes up and I've got links and info and all the things. So trying to keep everyone informed of what's going on and what's this and what's still available, all that stuff. So all that is done and that's all the housekeeping. Let's get into the actual card. This video specifically is for the Clearly Besotted collab and you guys know I love me cutesy and I do love gnomes. I do. I don't know why. I just think they're adorable. And this set is adorable. So I was super excited about it. So I made a fun little Christmas card with my little gnomes. Still managed to get some splatter in there, as always. And yeah, keep watching and I will show you guys how I made this card. And at the end of the video, I'll link. I did a clearly besotted video for my Halloween series um, two or three weeks ago, whenever. I'll have a link to that at the end as well. And yeah, that's it. Let's get into the card making. So this is the Clearly Besotted Merry Mix and Match Gnomes set. And I went very, for me, very clean and simple with it. But you can actually build a great big tree with this set. There's three different stamps. And there's like a gnome sitting, a gnome peeking out of the middle of the tree. Like, it's so cute. It's so cute. But... I knew I didn't have time to do that. I can't wait to see the other makers and what they make with it because I want to see the whole tree like, you know, assembled in color because I think it'll be so cute. But I took just the top of the tree, this little stamp and the, the big old wood slice that you can use as a trunk or you can use it and just have your little character sitting on it. And these two little individual gnomes and the little um, individual poinsettia just because I was like, ah, it fits on the you know, in between the other stamps. And I stamped them onto Simon's Smooth White cardstock with Simon's Intense Black Ink using my Misty. And I had rubbed the stamps really well with my fingers because brand new stamps, um, good quality photopolymer. Uh, there's some stuff on them during the washing out process when they make them. And rubbing them with your hands just helps kind of condition the stamps. So they take ink better. The other option is just ink them up and stamp them onto scrap paper multiple times. That also helps condition them and you'll get better results. That especially, you'll notice that difference with solid images, um, but line art as well. So got them conditioned, stamped them with that ink, and then I'm just using my Spectrum Noir Tri-Blends to color these in. I will have a link at the end of this video to, I have a Spectrum Noir playlist because I've done 
well over a dozen, getting close to, I think, to a couple dozen different videos coloring with these. You can use COVID markers. You can use whatever you want. I just, I'm back on my little Spectrum Noir kick. Just, okay, it always just depends on my mood, honestly. I like the convenience of these because, you know, one marker, three shades in the marker, light, medium, and dark. I don't have to think. That is a bonus, <laughs> especially right now. So I kept the coloring simple because well, like Christmas colors, you know, and just did my t same old, same old, you know, darkest to lightest. And I, I, I really did enjoy coloring these little images. They're just, they're cute. They're so cute, you know. So use just the same red set of red, you know, shades for all the little red areas, the green for the tree and the one little gnome and darkest to lightest. That's just what works for me. So as I started, you know, filling everything in, getting it all blended, um, I pulled out one of the turquoise shades, the blue turquoise blend for those little individual um, ornaments and then um, and use the gold yellow blend for the little flower centers and the little bell on his hat. Love it. And then I use the lightest shade from that blue turquoise blend to add like to the, to the little cocktail glass. Like ser again, seriously, can it get any cuter? Can it really? Love it. And yeah, after I was done coloring them, I took my white gel pen and just added little, little highlights, little dots, like I always do. Again, not doing any sort of um, reference with, in terms of like light source or anything like that. I know I sound like a broken record, but it's true. I just don't. It, it helps. It does help, you know, when you have an actual little bit of a reference. But for those, I would like Christina Werner, Sandy Elnock. Um, there's a lot of makers out there that really help explain that better, like light sources and shading and how to make your images look amazing. I highly recommend checking out those ones if you want to learn more in those terms. I just don't. <laughs> Welcome to the chaos. Anyway, after I was done coloring, trimmed them all out. There are coordinating die sets available, again, while supplies last, but I just turned them out and set them aside. And then I die cut um, some white cardstock with one of Simon's nested domed arches wafer dies. And then I took one of the domed arches stencils that is slightly smaller, doing a very simple blend. This is a good way to create a more depth and dimension without actually adding more layers. And it's something I need to do more often. I always forget to do stuff like this, but it makes a difference, you know, without actually having to add like extra layers of cardstock. So I put the die cut piece onto my waffle flower grip mat and the stencil, centered it over it, and then I blended three different shades of green ink, just working lightest to darkest. It's Simon's Positively Saturated Inks in Sprout, Fairway, and Field. And I've mentioned this a million times. With these inks, they smooth out as they um, dry. So they just end up looking really, really nice when they're dry, you know? So I don't have to worry about having like a perfect blend. Always with those inks specifically, just let them dry and then come back to it. And you, you'll be surprised. Like you guys see in some of my videos, it's like my blend will look like a hot mess. And then by the time everything's done, it's like, oh, it's all smooth and fabulous looking. <laughs> it's definitely not a trick of me editing or doing things off scene. It's like, nope, that's just the ink drying. Makes me look better than I am. Anyway, did all of that. And then I took a piece of Nina Desert Storm cardstock and I stamped it with the Simon Says Stamp Outline uh, Merry Christmas background stamp. And I used my anti-static powder tool. I inked up the stamp. I just put it face up on my work surface, inked it up with um, white pigment ink, and then pressed the cardstock into it. Wasn't perfect. Again, not worried about it. I st even then, I still used my like a dry brush to kind of remove some of the excess um, embossing powder because I coated it with detail white embossing powder. Don't know why I bothered with that because I was planning on cutting this down anyway, but old habits die hard. So coated it with that detail white embossing powder, melted this with my heat tool, and then I cut it down with one of my Waffle Flower A2 rectangle dies. So it'll be smaller than the A2 card front, but it also cuts off some of the edges where, yeah, I messed up with stamping, etc. Again, yeah, yep, yep, yep. So got it all melted, tilted it back and forth in the light to make sure everything was smooth and shiny and good to go. And then I grabbed a piece of uh, Schoolhouse Red cardstock, used my anti-static powder tool, 
and I stamped the the Christmas with my Nomi's <laughs> sentiment from that stamp set. Stamped that with white pigment ink, poured on the same detail white embossing powder, tapped off the excess, melted that with my heat tool, let that cool off for just a little bit. Doesn't take very long, but let that cool off. And then I removed the excess anti-static powder with my um, little microfiber cloth. And then I'm going to die cut that with one of the Simon Says Stamp Sentiment Label wafer dies. So I lined up the wafer die. I tape it into place with just little bits of washi tape so that this doesn't shift when I run it through my die cut machine. And then after I die cut the sentiment, I don't often show this on videos. It just, and it just depends too. I don't always do this either. Sometimes I just cut the ends off with my paper trimmer. Again, it just depends on my mood. But other times I will flip the, the die cut piece around and line it up a second time just so I can run it through my die cut machine. So I get that pressure cut edge because there is a difference. It's subtle. And again, sometimes, you know, I go for that extra minute of effort. And other times I just, you know, snip it with my, my paper trimmer. You could use scissors too. I just don't like using scissors because I can't cut a straight line anymore to save my life. <laughs> this is why we have all the guides now, you know, T-square rulers and paper trimmers and things that just make all of it easier, you know? So trimmed off the sentiment though with um, using the wafer die taped in place, ran through a second time. Set that aside. I adhered the little domed arch that I had ink blended on with Simon's Big Mama foam tape. So it's popped up just a little bit, you know, give it that little bit of dimension. And then I'm going to add splatter because why not? You can always skip this step. But you guys know, you guys know, I love me some splatter, especially gold splatter. So I use my Gonsai Tombi Starry Colors, put a little bit of water into the yellow gold one, the one I use like all the time. And then you swirl that up really, really good. Use my little fan brush for this. With these types of watercolors, you do need to let the water like settle in or you just gotta swirl quite a bit with your paintbrush till it's just really good and mixed. And then I splattered this on the background. So put that in, I had it in my splat box, splattered with the gold watercolor, love, you know? And then I ended up off camera stamping the gnomes a second time and quickly colored them. Did not take very long because I already, having already done it the first time, it's like I just followed the exact same what I did. So quickly colored them because I was like, they need to go on the inside and they just, they need to be colored. They're just cute. If you wanted to keep it simpler, you could just stamp them with like green and red ink. That would look really cute too. I almost did that, but I don't know. Me making more work for myself when I have no time whatever but they're so cute so <laughs> I stamped the little from our gnome to yours on the inside with verse fine Claire nocturne ink and then adhered these little dudes on the inside love it and then to adhere everything on the card front I just used um, some of Simon's little thin uh, foam squares so again gives it a little bit of dimension but not a whole lot of bulk the tree I adhered with just um craft tacky glue. I was so glad I did that separate little poinsettia because there was like a blob of the splatter that was kind of annoying me. Slap that little poinsettia on top of it. We're good. You know, we're good. It was intentional. <laughs> so put the tree on. I don't know why I love like this, just using that little topper as their tree on top of that ridiculously huge stump. Again, it just amused me. I thought it was funny. So I adhered those and then stuck my little my little gnomies into place and then adhered the card front to the card base with craft tacky glue. And my card is a standard A2 white note card. So four and a quarter by five and a half. And then as a final little bit of embellishment, I grabbed some pearls for my stash. Either, these are some Studio Cadia Wineberry pearls. They might not be available anymore, but there's so many options out there now. Like we have a million options for bling, which just again, makes me happy. I remember when stuff was first coming on the scene and like we just didn't have the things and how hard it was to even get sequins. And now there's like literally 5 million options. I love it. I love it. There's never enough. It's all good. So I adhered those into place with little dabs of craft tacky glue. The only thing I would have done differently is I would have added some like glitter with my aqua shimmer pen before adding the white gel highlights. But I forgot 
thought about it after I was done, but you don't want to add that stuff afterwards because it'll dissolve the white gel pen. Same with like glossy accents. You always do white gel pen last. So that's the only thing I would have done differently. But regardless, it's still super cute. Love these little dudes. And like I mentioned in the intro, I'll have links below the video to this set as well as to the clearly besotted line because there's tons to choose from. And there'll be um, a supply list with links to everything. And you can check that out below if you're interested. Thank you all so much for watching. Thumbs upping. Subscribe if you haven't. I'd love to have you. And I'll see you all very soon in another video. Bye.